Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to talk about my annual off-grid testing. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So we're back over in the Great Smoky Mountains again this year. Uh, and, and once again, this time I wanted to test uh, my capabilities uh, with my radio. Now, I don't know if you can really get it in the video really well, but it has been pouring rain. We got here yesterday afternoon late. I did a little bit of testing last night. Uh, and then I monitored, I posted a uh, position report on Winlink this morning and I monitored JS8 call for several hours. I've used roughly half of the battery right now, about 4.75 amp hours. I do have the solar panel laid out and the battery hooked up to it, uh, but with the limited amount of sun, I'm just not sure how much charge we're going to get today. I am using the TN07 uh, Engineering NFED antenna. So that's what you see probably going up here on the pole beside me, and then the wire runs out uh, pretty much straight to you guys at the camera. Let me interrupt right here for just a second. I've got to give a huge shout out to these gentlemen. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so now that you've had a setup for what uh, I was working with, where I was at, Let's uh, go through this a little bit at a time here. Uh, first, I got to give a huge shout out to all those stations uh, that participated in this uh, exercise. I greatly appreciate uh, all of the WinLink uh, messages that were passed. Uh, I tried to respond to, I think I got every one of those responded to, and also a few JS8 calls. Uh, some of the challenges though that I faced this year, the cabin was literally located in a hole. Uh, it was surrounded on three sides by mountain face that was probably, I'm, I'm just guessing here, 100 feet tall. Uh, the only opening was toward the south. Uh, now, one thing I found absolutely incredible uh, was that when I beaconed out on JS8 call on 40 meters, I got absolutely no response. I couldn't hear stations, I couldn't be heard. Um, I, I'm assuming that it was, you know, just being in that hole uh, that was preventing it. I still thought I would have gotten some NVIS propagation and gotten uh, a few stations closer in to me. Uh, remember though, we did start this exercise on a Monday afternoon. I'm sure there was not as many stations on the air as uh, maybe it would have been over the weekend. Also, something that was different this year was I did not have any APRS connections uh, like I had uh, in last year's experiment. And guys, I'll leave a link to last year's experiment right up at the top so that you can check out that video as well. So I had no APRS connection. I also had no wind link over 2 meter. Uh, so last year I, had, uh, I could connect to an APRS uh, Digipeter that was I-gating and a Winlink uh, two-meter gateway, and neither one of those connections were possible this year. Something else uh, that I ran into was because of the location of the cabin and and the hills surrounding it and whatnot. Uh, I had way less sun to work with this year than what I had last year. Uh, so last year, pretty much every single day, I could get the battery back to full charge. That was not the case uh, this year. Uh, another challenge that I faced, uh, and honestly, at, at this point, when I couldn't hear anything on 40 meters, uh, I, I was beginning to think that I had damaged something in transport. And then to make matters worse, I tried to connect to two or three, I believe it was three of my regular Winlink uh, gateways that I can connect to. And typically I can hit one of these three stations regardless of propagation and things like that. Uh, normally I can get into at least one of the three, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, again, maybe it was propagation, maybe it was being enclosed in that hole. I'm not sure what it was, but I could not hit any of those three stations. 
Honestly, I was a bit frustrated at the beginning of this. Uh, I, I was beginning to think that I had set myself up for a complete failure. Now, that's one of the cool things about going to new locations each year is uh, you are presented with a new set of challenges. And since I've never been to these, uh, you know, in the past uh, and, and run one of these experiments, I'm really not sure what to expect. Um, so, but kind of the same situation you might be thrown into if you were sent out to support, uh, you know, say an earthquake or a hurricane, you never really know what you're going to be faced with when you get there. So this keeps things as real as possible. After not being able to connect to any of those Windlink stations, uh, the three regulars, I decided I was going to go back to a script that I had written a few months ago. Uh, it's part of Pat Menu, and if you haven't seen the Pat Menu, I'll leave a link to that video right up at the top. One of the things inside of Pat Menu is a auto pat uh, tool that I wrote. And basically, AutoPAT allows you to plug in some parameters, what bands you want to work and what distances you want to try. And the radio will sit there and try to connect to each of those gateways until it uh, either has a successful connection, in which case it'll write that information to a log file for you, or it'll uh, exhaust the list completely without a connection. And either first or second on the list uh, for AutoPAT uh, stations to try was Alpha Bravo 4 November X-Ray. That station ended up saving my bacon for pretty much this entire trip. Uh, I, don't, I actually can't hit that gateway once I get back to home, and it's probably due to my noise level here uh, at my home QTH. But I was able to hit that uh, station, Alpha Bravo 4 November X-Ray, every single time for a wind link connection on 80 meters. I could hit it in the middle of the day. I could hit it uh, in the middle of the night. So great propagation, uh, and I don't think I ever had a failed connection uh, to that station. I have no idea if he watches this channel or not, but if, if you do watch this channel, uh, I got to give a huge shout out and thank you for uh, maintaining uh, that Winlink gateway. So that really did save my bacon uh, for this for this trip because I, I never could get JS8 call on 40 meters uh, to give me the propagation that I was looking for. Now we did have good success uh, testing JS8 call over 80 meters. I ran that test with N0 JPD. Uh, I was able to email back and forth with him with Winlink and set up a time to uh, go ahead and do some testing on that. So we, I was in the Great Smoky Mountains, Andy was back here in Middle Tennessee, and we were able to work that. Uh, in fact, we were working at turbo speed, uh, if that tells you how good of a connection we had, and we played with that for probably the better part of an hour one night. Uh, just kind of testing uh, a few things there. And we also made some other contacts uh, during that session over uh, 80 meters with JS8 call. One of the other stations that I was able to make a connection with, I believe he relayed this message uh, through N0JPD, but that was W3GME or Whiskey 3 Golf Mic Echo. Uh, so I was able to uh, pass a couple of messages back and forth uh, between us, between our two stations, using Andy in 0 jpd as a relay point. So that was uh, kind of a really cool little uh, experiment there using relays over 80 meters. Now something that was really cool during this test, uh, Kenny, KC4OJS, sent me an email with a challenge in there. And he basically uh, said, I have posted my color. What is it? And that was in, uh, in a Winlink message that he sent to me. Uh, he was using the same Winlink uh, position reporting that I was using uh, to be able to get that, uh, to, to be able to post that color up. So I used Pat Menu to request all of the nearby Winlink stations and waited for that email to come back in. Once, uh, once that email come back in, 
I did see Kenny's color that he had posted. Uh, and, and the way those guys use the colors is uh, they use a color code to indicate their situation. Uh, so green is everything is okay and running as expected. So I saw that uh, Kenny's color was green at the moment, and I went ahead and pecked out a quick reply in Winlink and sent that out on my next connection. Now let's talk about uh, the battery for just a second. I had the Dakota Lithium Iron Phosphate battery. Uh, it's the 10 amp hour version. And over the course of uh, the first night I was there and the uh, first morning, or the next morning rather, I used 4.7 uh, amp hours of my battery. So that left me with about uh, half of the battery. Uh, during that first day, I was able to only get about 1.8 amp hours from the solar panel. That's the morning that we woke up to pouring rain. The clouds did finally clear out, but it was probably, uh, I'm guessing, 10 or 11 o'clock local time before those clouds uh, cleared out. Uh, but that put me back up in the neighborhood of 7 amp hours. Uh, then by the end of day two, I was down to 3.93 amp hours. I used a little bit more on the following mornings, so that dropped me down. Um, let's see, I used 1.76 amp hours that following morning, so that dropped me down to 2.17 amp hours on the battery. Now, that the next day we had full sun uh, the entire day, but remember, I wasn't gathering as uh, much solar energy as I had the previous year, just with the uh, lack of sunshine with the terrain. Uh, but I did manage to get 4.2 amp hours that particular day. Uh, so that brought the battery back up to just over six and a quarter uh, amp hours. And then I used out of it uh, 2.52 uh, on that uh, last day. And then we packed up and headed out. So I wasn't able to generate as much as I would like, but it was enough, uh, you know, being, being conservative with the radio and how much I was using it and how many connections I was making, uh, I was able to stretch that battery out and make that last. If I'd have been running an SLA battery of the same size, I would have been hosed. There is no way I would have ever made it. So the Dakota Lithium battery uh, is definitely worth its weight in gold. Okay, I think we're gonna hold up right there for today. Next time, uh, next video, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the lessons I learned out of this trip. There was actually uh, several. So anytime we've got a failure, we need to try to, uh, you know, identify the problem and, and, and learn something from that. So we'll take a look at some of those lessons learned on the next video. All right, guys, until then, 7-3.